We make choices every day of our lives. Will I have toast or cereal for breakfast? Which route do I take to work today? A common assumption is that we make decisions based on our preferences. I like toast better than cereal, so that's what I'm going to have. We choose what we think will give us the greatest happiness, but what we decide is frequently influenced by seemingly trivial external or contextual factors. To demonstrate one such factor, we ran a live experiment at one of our School of Psychology Open Days. Visitors to the Open Day were invited to participate in a short experiment on decision-making and motor skill. We set up a carnival-style booth with a ball-throwing task. Volunteers had to try and throw a juggling ball into a pot from a two-meter distance. To entice them to participate, we offered a chocolate reward if they scored. We told them that they could either throw with their dominant hand and win one chocolate bar, or throw with their non-dominant hand and win two chocolate bars. In economics terms, we therefore presented our volunteers with a choice between a low-risk, low-reward option, the dominant hand, and a high-risk, high-reward option, the non-dominant hand. But here's the twist. We randomly divided our participants into two groups or conditions. One group of participants were presented with the low-risk, low-reward option as the default, and the other with the high-risk, high-reward option as the default. The instructions for both groups were explained in a short video that participants watched before entering the throwing booth. Once they had heard the instructions, participants had to pick up a ball with either their dominant or non-dominant hand, depending on condition, and walk into the booth to take their throw. Before throwing, they were given a final choice. Stay with whatever the default option was, or switch to the other hand. The question was whether people would make their decision based purely on a judgment of risk and reward, or whether the way the options were presented or framed would have an impact. Let's see what happened. Do you want to stick with the left hand or switch to the right hand? If participants decided which hand to throw with, based purely on a trade-off between risk and reward, we would expect that the high and low risk options would be chosen equally often in both groups. Well, that's not what we found. 191 people participated in total. Of the 98 people who walked in with the ball in their dominant hand, 75% stuck with that and did not choose to switch. Similarly, of the 93 people who walked in with the ball in their non-dominant hand, the majority, 62%, stuck with that and did not switch. So what happened? People tended to stay with whatever the default option was that had been presented to them. This is known as the status quo effect. People take the current position as their reference and evaluate decisions from that vantage point. So our volunteers didn't decide whether to throw with their dominant or non-dominant hand. Instead, they decided whether to give up one opportunity in exchange for another. People are reluctant to give up what they already have. This behavior fits with what we know from cognitive psychology about people assessing losses and gains differently. The potential loss associated with moving away from the default position was perceived as greater than the potential gain of switching to the other option. And that was true regardless of what the default option actually was. Utility companies, banks and insurance providers can exploit this effect to their advantage. The way choices are presented to people, including the options which are marked as default, can have an enormous impact on the decisions people make.